camera focusing on what you're doing, right? So the camera, although you, you may have peaked there, there's a camera, the camera is for recording the sound, okay? So because of this, this camera is very good at recording the sound, very good quality. So here we will start talking about what we mean a uh, process, okay? So this is a very fundamental stuff, okay? I hope that you have learned already half of it, okay? If you don't know about us, I mean uh, the first first part, I, I mean this part, okay, what is the program, okay? So I hope that you learn half of it, and you finish another half, okay? So what is the half, let's say, what is the compilation flow, okay, what the compiler will do, as well as uh, when you write in C, there are some difficult stuff that uh, people don't tell you in a, in, in a proper lecture that, hey, how to make it easier to write, okay? So I will give you such kind of things, and then, once we understand, hey, how to uh, efficiently write a program, or effectively, I just say efficient, effectively write a good program or a working program, then we'll go on to kickstart with the Fox system call. The Fox system call is a system call that turn this guy, the program, into a process. Actually, the process run, run with a particular code. Okay, so what is the code we're talking about and what actually the system call is? Okay. So that uh, we we'll first start the program, okay? So I think everybody knows how to write a program, but it's just a file, okay? To me, a program is a file. It's not a living thing, okay? So what we are talking about is, uh, is not about what category we are talking about, right? This is a lesson in the first, uh, first programming course, the uh, lecturer always tell you that, hey, a program has a certain category where you're talking about the uh, assembly code, machine code, high level programming language, okay, or something we may, we may have skipped, just like the object code. If you have written a uh, Java before, you know what is an object code, okay? But we are not talking about this, okay? This time we are not talking about this. We are talking about, yeah, when you have a program in a high level point of view, okay, high level uh, programming language, Okay, what will happen if you go through the compilation process? Okay, in this course, I will disclose many details. Okay, in front of the class. So, if you have a laptop, if you have a Linux, if you have a Mac, okay, or uh, others, okay, you can go through the process together with me. Okay, so what I'm going to disclose to you is what actually happened when you call GCC, uh, Whistle C. Uh, maybe you are using Mac, you have heard of LLVM, okay? So what happened is the first step is there a preprocessor. I will disclose to you what a preprocessor is doing by using terminal, okay? So when you go to uh, our repo, okay? So if you if you don't do know how to download it, uh, you can uh, stay stay uh, without any. Uh, any coding experience is okay. Later on, it it does okay. What happened? This. What should I should I bring something? Uh, so I I will tell you how to do it during the uh, lab in the, this uh, Thursday. Okay, but we can click. Okay, click to the example directory. Go to the chapter two part one. Okay, I already write up a summary here. Oh, why I did you have this? Uh, Small font here, okay. So there is a different, diff, uh, several directories. I'm talking about this program directory, okay, about the code compilation. So you can go to the program, okay. Then you can find a set of things, okay. When you download everything, follow everything, let's say that you you go back to a few layers, go back to the few layers, go back to this uh, 350 layer, then you can should be able to find the download button where you. Oh yeah, download button here. Okay, so you can download the entire things and put it in your laptop. I already done that in my Linux environment. So this is my Linux environment. I already downloaded it and keep everything in my uh, others. So I'm going into the example directory, chapter two, part one. All right. Oops. So you can see all the directories color in blue. So I will go to the program directory. So whenever you start with this uh, repo, okay, I set up all the Mac files. So when you enter, just click, uh, not click, sorry, type, type Mac. Then everything will go in the compilation process. And you see some, uh, if you already understand what is a GCC compilation, you will find their options. So the options seems to be a little bit 
strange. You may never heard of what is the minus d here. Yeah, this is maybe the first time you see what is minus d. So what is minus d? You can refer back to the natural notes. Natural notes already tell you what is minus d. And minus d is you can call GCC to do semi without the complete compilation process. Ask it to expand something. So what are the expansion? The expansion over the uh, that that guy. Okay, we call this guy. <sighs> I I should bring another clothes. Okay, maybe I wearing a jacket. So this uh, number sign. Okay, we got a number sign. Number sign define. Number sign include is actually something that you can expand. Okay. So what is the expansion? Let's take a look at this uh, program. This program you should have seen somewhere else. Okay. So uh, this program define txt. Okay. So define a name called txt, and the name eventually translate into a string called hello. Okay. So this is something that you have to learn before. Now, what happen if I put it inside the point f? Okay. So somebody already tell you that hey, it's this this isn't difficult at all. It means that whenever you compile it, this will translate into string hello. But actually, does it really behave like that? We can look at it. We can look at it. So this is the command. Okay. So I already compiled it. So this command means that I will compile by expanding all the preprocessing thing. Okay. And then output minus only now output, output to the file for how the out. Okay? So I I love to use this command. This command is called catch to dump all the contents. Just dump to the screen. Okay? So you can see this original way to look at uh, this hollow program. So what happened if I catch this program? This program is after I go through the processor you actually see something more that is for GCC okay GCC will try to understand this this bunch of things okay so you can skip it okay skip all the things here and look at this part and compare this part to this part okay you see the difference this one is this txt is being expanded by GCC minus e okay so this is simple right uh, just to tell you that your lecturer in other courses didn't tell any lies, okay? They they give you the exact thing, okay? Now, what are the other things that you will face? Is something called macro, okay? So how many of you have used macro before? Only very few, only one. Sorry, you're the only guy. So others, do you know what is this? No one else. So macro, what is the macro? Macro is uh, kind of defining a function, China, not a function, of course. Okay. So you can define uh, just like the hello and the txt relationship, right? So you can define small uh, with a parameter, parameter, open bracket, close bracket, and we have two parameters, a and b. Now, what is translation? This time, the translation, translation is parameterized. So what is the meaning? It's just not playing from txt to hello. You can ask, hey, I input an A, I input a B. So whenever you find an A, input just like here, just like here. So what is the here? Here is the I and J. Whenever you find I, please copy and paste all the A here, the definition color in orange, into I. Copy and paste, copy and paste. Then I input J for B, so copy and paste J, and a concurrence of every B. So this is called macro, just like functions, right? But this is actually not a function. Function means that you call the function, you jump to elsewhere. You jump to elsewhere, jump to some place, okay? If you have heard of a assembly code, okay? How many of you have heard? Are you still, is a, are you still writing the CPU X088 simulator? No, 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 oh my god. That is the most interesting course in the IE, okay? It's a other course I, I, I understand it's not, not, not very interesting. That XCPU course is very interesting, okay? So uh, this is the translation. Now let's take a look. Okay, so again, uh, 
I have uh, such a big chunk of things, okay? You don't know what is what has been performed, okay? So if you want to start it over, you can type big clean, so it will clean everything, and we compile everything again, so that you can see what are the things that are being done. Now, let's take a look back at the uh, lecture notes. Did you already tell you that? This program is program slash swap.c. So you can go to here. So swap.c compilation happened here. So what I have done is just uh, translate every define, every improve, expand it, put it in the place that you call it. Okay. So let's take a look at the original. The original is something like this. Okay, so the swap is defined as a sign of curly braces. Curly braces in INTC C equal to A blah 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 and then until the end of the closing curly braces. And of course after I define it I call it. Okay? I, I shouldn't say I call it, okay? I ask it for help. I ask it for help later on when we go through GCC, GCC will replace that trunk of curly braces stuff into that location. And let's take a look what is it. Okay, so uh, GCC do a lot of things, define many things up there. You don't need to care. Just take a look at here. Okay, so if you cannot remember what happened in the C file, okay, so do a slight comparison. You find that, oh, the printf, printf is still here, printf is still here, the two printf before and after, still good. Now how about the swap? Oh, the swap is being replaced, right? And the replacement has a parameter, A and B. And what it is doing, it's just doing a substitution. Substitute, whenever you call it, oh, the uh, parameter is I, now I substitute every occurrence of this I, and so that the occurrence should be A, replace it A to all I. Now remember, this is replacement, so that you can do some special things. What are the special things? Now I edit the file. Uh, swap proxy. Okay, so the special things is like, uh, I don't like to call it I. I just do some crazy stuff. I just put a black cat there. Okay, put black cat there. So what should be the replacement? The replacement also replace the file match together with the black cat or not? Let's take a look. Okay, just type make again. It will compile everything. So swap.c is already included there. Let's take a look at the swap.out. Of course, I will also the output the swap.c so that you can compare. Okay, so can you compare? Let me highlight the line. Yeah, if I put down there's a black cat I instead of I, now look at the parameter replacement. The parameter replacement also believe in you. What you said is, oh, black cat I, I put it there. No problem. Now, what is the crazy stuff about it is, <laughs> I, I don't think that you will find it as normal, okay? Let's say I'm doing something like this, okay? Swap has become a I plus 10, 3 plus 20. Okay? So when you take a look at it, if you think that it's a function call, is a thing that swap is function call, it's totally okay. Right? Function call. Function call all the parameters. First parameter is I plus I plus what times 10, okay? I plus 10 should be saying that, oh, there's, let's say I was the value, I is 10, so it becomes 20, then this guy is below 30, let's swap it. No. If it is a Mac Pro, if it's Mac Pro, so let's take a look at make compile. Okay, so it is involved, no problem. Cat the out and also cat the swap dot c. Okay, so this is the translation. Do you think the translation is good, or the translation part? I mean, the translation part should be perfect. Just copy and paste, right? Do you think that you can further compile this curl or not? No, why? Why cannot? Hmm? Yes, so the left hand side of the assignment operator is not a variable. Yes, it just don't care. 
It just don't care. Okay. So if you have a have a chance to write macro, okay. And let's say your boss tell you to do it, okay? Maybe your FRB supervisor tell you to do it. Make sure that you understand what is the context of the macro. Because macro, wow, what happened? It's because purple. Huh? Yes. Because because my my code is too poisonous. Okay. Yeah. So you see, this is the power of macro. Is just don't care, don't care. Copy and paste. And whenever you go on with the compilation process, let's say I just purely compile this code. Call it a swap, and then <laughs> compile the swap dot C. Okay, go on. Then it will complain. Okay, but take a look at the compilation warning errors. You don't understand what it is. You don't just understand because the error comes from the expand code. Okay, so this macro. Uh, you will find many macros in others. Uh, source code like uh, the source code that are uh, in a Linux kernel, in its library, many of the uh, main true code will contain macros, okay? But it's not a must in your program in this in this course, okay? So this macro. Uh, if you're interested in learning more over macros, you can ask me for one set of codes, okay? Let's say some examples, okay? This is an elite class that happened last semester. We talk about a lot of crazy macros. Okay, but uh, this is uh, out of scope. Then next, what is this header file? Okay, I am very sure that, very sure that none of the lecturer have dig deep into this part. Okay, just tell them ah, the tutor has already prepared the course and you include it. Okay, and suddenly you include it, it works. You don't know why. Okay, usually like that, the code works. You don't know why. The code fails. You don't know why. Okay, yeah. Now I disclose to you what happened when you write header files. Okay? So header file, what is it? You include standard IO.h. What is the meaning of include that? Can anybody give me a quick answer one sentence? What is the purpose for you include standard IO.h? Hmm? Input input module. Very good. Input a library modules, okay, but it's wrong. It's correct for Java. It's correct for um, uh, maybe Python. Wrong for C. C is crazy, okay? So your, your answer is good if it is in other context, okay? So why C is crazy? Let's take a look what happens if you include a file in a program, go through the preprocessor, what is the end product, okay? So the end product combining these two files, okay? We call it uh, the include.c, the C file, as well as the dot .h file. So let's take a look what are they. Okay. So header dot .h, okay? So the header dot .h contain the definition of a function which call at fun. Okay, just a very simple demonstration purpose. I adding two numbers together, we turn it. Good. Now, how about the include.c? So include.c, as uh, our classmate already mentioned that, yeah, we import import something, okay? So what is the ma actual meaning of import? Let's take a look after it's go through the preprocessor, okay? So I just compile it, and the compilation finished with expansion of all the defined as well as all the include statement. So after the expansion, what would you see is something like this. Go include the out. Okay. I also open it. So you will find this guy. Oh sorry. This guy repeated inside the expanded code. So this area is expanded code and this area is the original code. They didn't change because this is a function call. It's not a math call. This add fun is a function call. So function call will not be expanded. So what are the things being expanded? It's this guy. How can you describe this expansion? Hmm, let me also disclose to you the header dot h. Okay, so I highlight this part. How can you describe this expansion? Any substitution? No, no substitution for A and B. It's just a pure copy and paste. Okay? Whatever you written in the header file, you include it. 
it is being copied and placed directly just F over F over the file, put it there and F close. Okay? Nothing changed. Nothing's changed. So in the sense that our classmate is giving a very good answer, import something, import some library. As long as what you are import in a header file contain codes, then you're really importing some codes because it's copy and paste. But you can include different things. Inside the include file, you can define constants using a, a number size define. You can define function prototype. Okay, so this is just a very simple copy and paste process. Okay, so in group file now you understand that there's no secrets, no secret. You just uh, find a find an engine GCC doing all the copy and paste. Okay, so some people are uh, understanding this stuff, then they will find ways. Okay, find ways to let's say I am in in this code is sucks. Why it sucks? Why how come I define something in a header file? Why not we we combine together and put it in one place. That's good. As long as you understand what it's, what it's doing. Okay? So of course, uh, in your course data structure, data structure already tell you how to write a proper header file. Header file tells you to define a uh, function prototype and then uh, the, in the compilation of the header doesn't mean anything now. You understand? It's copy and paste. The compilations happen in the other C source code. Okay, so it is not being a very uh, difficult stuff. Just copy and paste. Okay, so for other stuff of the compilation, okay, the compilation stuff. If you want to know more, okay, you can take several courses. One of the courses is the theory, theory over compiler. Uh, compiler okay, just the theory stuff. Okay, uh, it's already uh, gone. Okay, it's about over only a uh, four semester. Give me the term one term. Two, okay, is used to have this course, we call it a compiler course. Uh, tell you how to construct code from uh, some artificial code, but it's already uh, gone, not over. Okay, if you're a minor student, minor student already know about this course, it's teaching you uh, how to write an assembly language. Very good course. I don't know why it's not over in CS department. I mean, CS major students. Major students don't know how to write assembly language. Okay, you can ask some major students here. Okay, so uh, yeah. Uh, for major student, they will take another. Uh, uh, I can how can I describe this course? No one want to take it because it's a very tough course. Okay. Then what happened inside the compilation process after we know that we're uh, doing all, a lot of copy and paste stuff? Okay. First of all, the compiler will do some optimization. Okay. So the optimization, what is? What is the meaning of optimization? Does it mean that it will, ah, I give it a, a double bubble sort, it's automatically convert into quick sort? No, okay? It will change the code structure into, ah, uh, you say that I want sort, okay? It give me the best sort ever. No, it's just trying to locate stupid codes, inefficient code, okay? And helps you to translate it into a simpler version. Let's take a look at this code, huh? This code. Who think that this code is smart? Huh? I think no one thinks that this code is smart. Huh? Now, I want you guys to change this code into a simplest form. How can it be optimized? What is the simplest form? Yeah, yeah you are smiling. What is the answer? Yeah, return trade, right? Yeah, INT, INT main void return trade. Okay, so for the compiler, okay, is the compiler so clever, is as clever as you, or is just a dumb of a crap software? Let's take a look. Okay, so we have two commands. The minus s means what? Means the generation of assembly code. Okay, so what does it mean of generation of assembly code? I will compile it and put it in a, in a CPU to run. Okay, I want to generate assembly code. Why? Because we go back a few slides. Okay, go back a few slides. So after you expand the code, it will go through compilation and optimization, and the optimization will generate assembly code. So we can only observe whether the code is being optimized in the assembly level. Okay, so I will guide you through the code, don't worry. Okay, so let's start up. Okay, so let's clean the screen. So I compile this two commands. 
with the, with the assembly language generation. One is called stupid ad. Okay, I call this called stupid ad. Stupid ad. What is the O zero? Okay, the O zero. Then you find it means that we turn off optimization. Okay, turn off optimization. And minus O one means turn on the optimization. Turn on optimization level one. Okay, we have three levels. 01, 02, 03. We sell them as 03 because 03 will be all the sum of your execution, which is very dangerous. Okay, so we will use 02 usually. Okay, sell them as 01. And if you if you want want to understand, hey, will will compiler will do some optimization or not? We will usually try 0. Okay, so let's take a look at. So it's a little bit hard to observe. So let's take a look at the unoptimized code. Zero dot x. Oh, what is this? Okay, so what is this? I I don't talk about the things happening around the entire code. Let's focus as this three lines. Okay, so what this three lines means? Okay, you don't need to understand what this guy means. You can treat it as a memory location. Okay, it's a memory location. And what is dollar one? Dollar one means a constant value one. Okay, so move means set a variable to its value and what is the value is one okay so this means set to one this means add to the same variable so there's the same name right same same number the same variable add one and then last add more one so there's a set and then add twice so can you find any similarity here Yes, set one time and then add twice. So that means the zero optimization, turn off optimization, doesn't change anything. It's obeyed what you set. Now, how about the optimization when it is turned on? Okay, turn on. Can you find this one? Move, set something, okay? Set a variable called EAX. I really don't know what this is. Don't, don't. It doesn't matter. Just move something and set some value. And what is the value? Dollar three. Three. This is return three. Okay. So when optimization is turned on, it is optimized, and the number of calls is faster. Okay. So I have tried some of the programming contests like. Uh, uh, Facebook Hacker Cup, something like that. I, I really tried okay, last week, okay, there is a horrification run on a Facebook Hacker Cup. I tried one code with the optimization, 20 seconds with optimization, 02, it's going down to eight seconds. I didn't change anything of, of in my code. I didn't change, oh, I changed the code from a big O of N squared to N, okay, it's faster. No, just turn on the optimization. Then I have a gain, okay, from 20 seconds, down to x seconds. Okay? So this what's the meaning? The meaning is you better compile everything with the optimization turn on. Yeah, it's safe and it's very efficient. Now let's go on. Any question you want to ask? If you have any question you want to ask, you can interrupt me. Okay? I'm okay. You just interrupt me. Go on. Okay, so the some something extra. Okay, something extra. Uh, why I disclose to you so many GCC options? Maybe this is the only time in your life look at so many GCC options. Next time you never use GCC, maybe you go out and you always use Microsoft. And okay? why I want you to understand it? Because when you look at assembly code, actually you learn a lot. Let's say in this code. What's this code mean? Do you know what's this code mean? What's the meaning of this code? You have a string, right? If it's C, okay, uh, it's not C plus C plus it's a string object. Yeah, this is a C string, as an array, okay? You have a string buffer called hello, and I set hello world to it, okay? So this is the code. Now I want to edit this code. First, I don't prepare this code, so I will write it now, okay? So let me uh, open a, oh, no. I go to elsewhere, so this is the very good command called push D. Later on, I push the stack, then I can go back to this location. So uh, I edit this code called a C.C. Okay, 
So let's go, huh? So the main and then what else? Ah, oh, hollow. Okay, hollow twenty. Okay, then hollow strain. Uh, maybe hollow world. Okay, then I print it out. Okay, good. So what would you expect? Can I compile the code successfully? This is the first question. If I can compile successfully, then you will have the next question. What is the output? Huh? What do you think? Now you can you can talk with your neighbor. Yeah, don't be that quiet, okay? I'm not very very uh, good at a uh, at a uh, communicate with the one standing in the back, okay? You can talk with your neighbors, okay? What this code will give you? Can I compile it? I didn't compile it. Yes, I just write it. If I can compile it, can I get the results? Now I compile. I usually I compile it with this command. Make C. Yeah, no problem. Okay, maybe you you will complain to me that hey you didn't turn on any warning. Okay, I turn on warning. Still no warning. Okay, run it. No problem, of course. Yeah. Yeah, this is just a just a beginning. Yeah, don't don't think that I always treat you guys. Huh? Don't don't be don't be like that. Huh? With confidence to yourself. Next. Yeah, of course I have next step. Next step. What is the next step? Next step is interesting. Uh, let me see. Uh. Okay. I, I'll cut it out. Don't worry. What is the results? Where's the results? Hell. Yeah. Yeah, really hell. No problem. No problem. No complaint. No error. No warning. Hell. Good. Now, this is only a number step. Step number two. Step number three. Now, everything is good. It's cool in this code program, right? And someone tell you about this. Some of you about this, the, the claim is array is equal to a pointer, right? So I will change this into a pointer. Yeah, just satisfy some of the people's claim. Huh? OK, I'll cut it out, OK. Again. This is fifth step, huh? Maybe you will expect, ah, oh, is that a fourth or fifth step, okay? Yeah. This thing about it, do you think that this program can be compiled? <laughs> yeah, you need to talk with your neighbor right now, huh? Previously, I set up a buffer. This time, I don't set up a buffer. I just write down a pointer, uh, as three size there, and just satisfy some of the claims that people tell you. Yes. That pointer is an array. Array is a pointer. Let's go. No problem. Oh, again, I didn't turn on the warning. Okay, okay, okay. My fault. My fault. Turn on the warning. No problem. Then what's the results? Is it still hell? Hmm. The, the entire class stung. <laughs> what happened? What happened? Segmentation fonts. Uh, why? I just change a few bytes. Okay? I just made a few bytes segmentation fonts. Okay? Now, the story is very simple. The story is whether you provide a buffer to the string. Oh, interesting, huh? Yeah. This is a horrible program, so uh, yeah. some some people don't don't argue with me, okay? I mean uh, don't argue, okay, please. So. Now this is a dangerous program, as you can see. And the reason is, if someone wants to make it in a one sentence conclusion, is the previous version you provide buffer. There's a memory space. And other version is this version is you don't provide a buffer, 
and you try to modify them. But this is not the real case. Okay? I will revisit this example when we go to chapter 4. Okay, this is chapter 2. We'll go to chapter 4, we'll revisit this example. If you're impatient, the answer actually lies inside the assembly code. The assembly code tells you something if you write in this version. This version. Change it back. Change it back to this version. Oh! Type the wrong thing, huh? Okay, so this version, the assembly code after you compile it, actually gives you the answer. Why? Why? What is the difference? Okay, so you can uh, go ahead and try that out if you are patient enough or you just don't care, okay? Yeah, we will revisit this problem in chapter 4, very beginning of chapter 4. Okay, so interesting stuff, huh? So you you know, if you come to this class full of confidence, yeah, I know C, okay? After a good example, you think that I'm covered. Yeah, I, know, I know nothing, okay? Yeah, when I see some of the so called C expert interview questions, I also have the same feeling. Oh, I'm rubbish. Yeah. Well, very complicated, okay? So uh, then we'll go through the process. I will skip some of the steps. Why? Because this is not uh, something that I illustrate and demonstrate over the class, it's the compilation of the so called library. Okay, so actually what is a library? Library is not a header file. First of all, you understand now, header file is a content, okay? Plain text, copy and paste into your program code. It never con may never contain, I use a may, okay? This depends on how you write a header file. You may never contain any implementation. So usually people will put the implementation elsewhere. We call it in Windows DLL, okay? Uh, I, I have the name here. It's called, uh, uh, where is the uh, win Windows name? Uh, Windows name. I, I, I deleted, okay. Yeah, because I hate <coughs> Windows. Uh. So the Windows is called DLL, it's a dynamically linked library, okay. In Linux, we call it SO file. Now, when they link together, it's actually the, a compilation of a bunch of C functions. A C functions concatenate together without the main, of course, no main, okay? Concatenate together, and then when you want to execute the code, you will check against, hey, whether when I when link the program, some of the libraries, whether it contain your code or not. Let's say you invent your own thing called print haha, okay? This is an access, okay, until you define it. So it will fail in the search of all the set of available dynamically like, uh, uh, math library or shared object. If it is, can be found, then you will finish the compilation process. But this is something that I cannot show in the class. Okay, so uh, you can try this commands, but I I never find it interesting, so I would prefer to skip skip. Okay, and some of the extra stuff. Okay, some of the extra stuff is uh, if you're interested in writing. Um, embedded system, okay, you will find these two guys keep on appearing, okay? Embedded system has a very interesting stuff, okay? The interesting stuff is its storage, very small, very, very, very small, compared to the computer that has a hard disk support, okay? So they will prefer to not to use SO, because SO means uh, you can install many, many libraries, but you don't need it. Dot A means whenever you need something, you will compile together and concatenate together with your program code. Okay, this is just something extra for you guys to understand. When you find it in Google, some people tell you, that, oh, there's something dot A. Actually, you don't understand what it means. That's a shame, right? So you have to uh, know about this. And actually, this bunch of things, if you're talking about dot, dot A static link library, so this dot A called static library, so the link library means that you concatenate all things together, build a very huge program. If it's uh, combining with the .so, .so is a shared object, it's never compiling together into a bigger program. So you have a small program. Whenever you want to run, whenever you want to run, the system will try to find the .so file for you. So this is how the people distribute software. When people distribute software to you, I give you an ESDA. Usually we tell you that, hey, you need to download some libraries or it fails because it's follow this path. I give you a library and I give you an ESC file. Then the ESC file will always satisfy this language. Ah, I find it as all, so I can run. 
if you just download the ESC file, but forget to download the library, the ESO files, once you run the program, the program will say that, hey, you missed some of the dependency. Yeah, you fail the dependency check, and then you cannot run. Okay, so this is how people distribute software to you. And how people uh, say that, oh, I rely on this, I rely on this, usually in a readme file, please install it before it's the program. Okay, so this is something extra. And the extra stuff continue with something that you're familiar. Yeah, whenever you write, um, I don't know what is the platform you love to use, maybe you love to use, um, uh, what is it, uh, Visual Studio, okay? Then you never heard of this. If you have used Linux, if you have used Unix, then whenever you compile a program, contains some math functions. Math functions, what are they? Log, power, square root. Then you suddenly find that you cannot compile. Why? Because you need to add a flag, minus LM. Now this is also related to the box SO infrastructure. Okay? The infrastructure say that if you put down minus L, minus L is one flag, and minus L and then M, that means that please check against the system whether the system have a math library installed or not. So you will have a compilation experience, maybe you are very advanced already, so you will experience like a compiled with uh, GCC minus da, 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 and then minus L are the flags. Socket. Yeah, you compile you compile your you, uh, BSD socket that's a networking program to tell the compiler, hey, check the system whether it's a socket support. Minus LP thread, you want to write threading program, okay? Then tell the GNC that, hey, please check again so whether the system has provided threading support. If there's no threading support, stop. I cannot go on with the compilation. Okay? So this is the minus L and then a string. Okay? And where will you find the string? Okay, oh, this is not VI, okay. Where will you find that string? I will go to the browser. So what is the thing that I will look for? Okay, so the math library asks you to put minus LM, right? Let's check the main page of square root function in C. Okay? Main means look up the menu. Menu page of square root. Let's take a look at. See this? The menu already tells you to do it. Okay, it's not something that I invented. Okay, it's a manual system telling you that hey, if you want to compile that, you have the liability that will fail, and it's your fault. Why? I told you to do it. Put minus LF. Okay, and let's say the the prefab functions I just uh, shown you. Okay, let's say we want to write threading function. Uh, prefab creates. Okay. See? It's already telling you to do the following. Okay? So whenever you find a new thing, like uh, maybe you later on want to play with graphics, okay? But in Linux, you want to compile things with open, what is that? Open GL, okay? Maybe you will have all the flags that you have to include, okay? So better every time that you face a new call, you don't know what it is, okay? Look at this menu page. This menu page already tells you what to include. Okay, so this is about uh, the include stuff, okay, and then I will skip ahead What is this first minute skip ahead. I don't talk about in great details that how to compile a program through multiple files, okay, because I already have the GitHub repo. GitHub repo is here. GitHub uh, examples, uh, chapter 2.1, multi-file. Okay, multiple files. The entire set of things already there. I have the clean, very clean, I, I consider it as a cleaner, clean explanation here. Okay, how to compile, what to compile, why is it so uh, uh, format and layout. Okay, I already write down everything. So you can read ahead. Uh, of course, it's not something required in this course, but later on, if you write your code with other people cooperating with others, maybe others love to dissect the entire big 
big C program in the box, okay? So remember in your first course, maybe it's already tell you that don't write everything in the main. Cut it down in the functions, okay? So this part is telling you, hey, if you cut it down in the functions, actually you can group a set of functions into different files and go through the header file process to distribute the code into parts and when you compile it, how to concatenate it back, okay? So you can go on. I have a very beautiful slice prepared for you guys. Yeah, beautiful. Huh? I consider it beautiful. Huh? And then when we come back on uh, tomorrow, tomorrow in the morning, we will directly go to the thing called process creation. Now, this is a warning. What is the warning? The warning is that when you go ahead for a few slides, you will find a call called Fox System Call. If you're impatient, how impatient it is, I don't care. Don't call it yet. Okay, don't call it yet. Don't write the program and call it. It's extremely dangerous. It's an extremely dangerous call. Okay, when it's coupled with for loop and while loop. Okay, yeah, it's a while, while loop and then you call for. For is a creation of a process, okay? So what happens if you're doing while one talk? Yeah, yeah, so that's why don't call it, don't. Look, I don't care how impatient you are, okay? You can read ahead, you can read ahead of code, but don't run the code. I will tell you when to run it. This is after tomorrow. After tomorrow, run it. Run it to your to your uh, desire, desire number of times, okay? Maybe you can go to Apple Store to run it as well, okay? We will see you tomorrow.